प्लीज गो सर वी आर लाइव नाउ ओके थैंक यू सो मच ए वेरी वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरी वन आई एम इंडीड प्लीज टू एक्सटेंड ए वेरी वार्म एंड कॉर्डियल वेलकम टू अवर चीफ गेस्ट श्री अनुराग वाजपेयी जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी डिफेंस इंडस्ट्रीज प्रोडक्शन एंड पर्सनल इन कोऑर्डिनेशन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ डिफेंस आई ऑल्सो वेलकम ऑल द एमिनेंट स्पीकर्स कॉमाडोर सिद्धार्थ मिश्रा फॉर्मर सी एम डी भारत डायनेमिक्स लिमिटेड डॉक्टर मयंक द्विवेदी डायरेक्टर डायरेक्टरेट ऑफ इंडस्ट्री इंटरफेस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी मैनेजमेंट डी आर डी ओ हेडक्वार्टर्स डॉक्टर एस सी कंसल को चेयरमैन एसोचम नेशनल काउंसिल ऑन एयर स्पेस एंड डिफेंस एंड चेयरमैन एस एम पी पी प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कर्नल के बी कुबेर सीनियर मेंबर एसोचम नेशनल काउंसिल ऑन एयर स्पेस एंड डिफेंस एंड डायरेक्टर एयर स्पेस एंड डिफेंस ई वाई मिस्टर विकास बलानी असिस्टेंट जनरल मैनेजर सिडवी मैडम असिमता सेठी प्रेसिडेंट एंड कंट्री हेड प्रेट एंड विटनी मिस्टर डी आर सुब्रमण्यम मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर एस एल एंड टेक्नोलॉजीज मिस्टर पार्था पी रॉय चौधरी कमर्शियल लीड इंडिया रॉकेट मार्टिन कॉरपोरेशन मिस्टर अशोक वधावन हेड लैंड सिस्टम्स डिफेंस एंड एरोस्पेस अडानी डिफेंस कैप्टन विक्रम महाजन रिटायर्ड डायरेक्टर एरोस्पेस एंड डिफेंस यू एस इंडिया स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप फोरम so a very very warm welcome to everyone and uh, before we move on i would request uh, sochm it team to please play the video
थैंक यू थैंक यू एसोच एम आई टीम एंड इट वॉज इंडीड ए वेरी वेरी एनकरेजिंग वीडियो विच हैज बीन प्रिपेयर बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ डिफेंस थैंक सो मच for them all preparing this such a nice video and uh, we all are prepared to participate in the forthcoming uh, def expo in uh, amdavad and we have been informed uh, from the by the defense ministry that uh, mr anurag bajpai will be joining any time but uh, we can uh, start the discussions and to move on i request uh, colonel kb kuber uh, member of the national council of swcm and uh, director ay to kindly moderate this session now Thank you, Mr. Rajora. So we are back again with the pre pre defects po seminars, and today we're going to discuss Industry 4.0. Um, I want to express my sincere gratitude and thanks to Rolls Royce, to uh, Mr. K P Puri, who is the former chairman, uh, former M D of uh, H A L Nasik, and um, uh, Mr. A Anirban Chatterjee. Um, Anirban Mukherjee was a senior uh, executive director in EY for compiling certain notes on uh, 4.0 because EY has got a very strong team uh, which actually focuses on uh, uh, process improvement and how they can sort of help companies implement uh, 4.0. So the question is, what is this 4.0 and why are we discussing it today? So 4.0 is all about uh, data. It's all about uh, using data. To, um, to to get to a better product. It's about increasing the efficiencies in the system. It's about uh, increasing the downtime. It's about um, uh, reducing the mean time between failures and the mean time to, and increasing the mean time to repair MTTR. So it's about, it, it's about making everything more uh, efficient. And so how do they do it? They have got what is called as the internet, uh, industrial internet of things, the uh, the cyber security and cyber physical systems, a uh, smart manufacture, cloud computing, uh, cognitive computing, artificial intelligence, VR. So, um, you know, full realization of smart computing demands connectivity. And that's what is is making it pretty smart. Um, there is a lot of AI and machine learning. The, the 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 machine learns a lot. The machine accumulates data. The machine passes the data from one to another. And then there is edge computing uh, for uh, you know um, which is uh, data analytics, which is done at the edge, and uh, that is where the data is created. Um, to minimize the latency time, then cybersecurity, which is one of the biggest threats today. And then, of course, there is the di digital twin technologies. And uh, digital twin actually helps you to uh, to have a twin in your in your own system while you have delivered the product out there and how you can actually um, um, use the digital twin to increase the productivity, improve workflows, design new products. So, so it's all about we are we are talking of a whole new set of things that uh, uh, that that actually uh, Internet of Things brings about. So, um, we have, uh, for example, Airbus, which conducted various simulation sessions on the A350 for the new design and the advanced materials that they used. Boeing launched the analytics, which uh, it provides data analytic tools. And then you have uh, Raytheon, which is focusing on delivering improved customer satisfaction using process architecture. Then uh, there is a lot of, you know, using digital technologies, they get a lot of feedback in the development cycle. Uh, case in point is the Thales uh, digital factory which is actually developing innovative products based on key digital technologies such as big data, AI, IoT. And um, of course, Lockheed Martin is using the data from connected systems to create uh, and replicate components, products and, and programs. And so there's a lot of things that's happening out there. Uh, Rolls-Royce, for example, has, uh, has, has, has focused on electrification and digitization and the digital teams in India and, and globally are in the forefront of driving this first digital first uh, culture at uh, Rolls-Royce. They've got a digital academy. Uh, their data experts analyze billions of data uh, points per flight. The current generations of aircraft uh, sort of collect something like 10,000 times more data uh, than in the 1990s. Uh, the pioneering industrial service of uh, of Rolls-Royce is about $3.5 billion uh, revenue. And uh, so there are there's so many things out there. There is 
Rolls Royce, for example, has a strategic uh, partnership with Infosys to digitally transform its aerospace engineering operations in India. It's also working with the Nanyang Technological University to develop digital solutions using AI, uh, including new virtual engine emulator that uses AI to analyze decades of engine design data. At uh, the joint venture with HAL, uh, for example, Rolls-Royce uses, uh, they have started implementing the digitally empowered manufacturing execution system, MES. So um, there are a few questions and I'm sure uh, we have uh, Ashmita also, who's going to talk to us a, a lot about how Pradhan Whitney does the same thing. We've got Partha who's going to tell us more about uh, Lockheed. We have got Indian companies like uh, SLN Technology who's going to tell us how Indian companies are doing. And I'm going to talk about an Indian company before I come there. So there is uh, this Best Koki, and I want to express my gratitude again to Best Koki. I visited them. It is uh, it's, it's it's a company that is um, uh, that that has actually integrated uh, uh, 4.0 into their manufacturing process, and they say that it is what marries advanced manufacturing techniques with IoT. And uh, they have many intelligent machines with them. Almost 90% of them are automated, and they began with what is called as an EOL. End of line is one of them. And the final inspection machine, this is the end of line machine is the final inspection one, which, uh, uh, which, which does uh, the, which does the inspection of the product. They've got 27 UOLs for various production lines and all of them are manufactured by their sister company, BS technology. And uh, what are the benefits? Data backup on server or authenticated access, interruption, free backup, virus free UOL system. So I visited Best Kogi, it's one of the very good units just around here in, in Gurgaon, little ahead of Gurgaon. So I have a few questions which I hope the panelists will keep in mind. Is 4.0 more relevant to the process industry or is it only for the manufacturing industry? Will our, with, a, with a good IT industry that we have, which is doing pretty well, is India as a country, better chance to migrate to uh, uh, to 4.0. Um, for an industry to transform from the erstwhile standards to 4.0, are there service providers who could help us do this? What are the basic advantages of 4.0? I've listed some. Has, uh, you know, companies like RR have, have benefited a lot in terms of even saving uh, uh, millions of dollars. And so therefore, uh, can we focus on what is the cost benefit analysis? for uh, for using 4.0 and what are the saved costs? Is there any empirical and physical evidence to prove that uh, it increased the profit, profitability, efficiency and higher management? Has it affected reduction in manpower? Consequently, has the employment rate gone down or is it vice versa or is it same? Is it more suitable for a high volume uh, production like uh, auto industry or is it uh, more suitable for defense or it is the same or, uh, or it, aerospace and defense should drop? How is the global industry adjusting to this? And what is the situation in the industry, Indian industry today? And for an industry to transform, what will the service providers do? And is, is it really relevant to us in the aerospace and defense? And therefore, what could be the recommendations? Should the DAP, for example, mandate uh, you know, uh, that you should have 4.0? So with all this, uh, there are so many questions out there. I think uh, uh, while Mr. Bajpai will join us in a, in a moment, I have the pleasure to call up Mr. Vikas uh, Bal Balani, who is Assistant General Manager, uh, Direct Credit Vertical in the SIDB. Um, Mr. Balani, all yours. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I see Mr. Bajpai joined us just now. Mr. Balani, if you can kindly wait, uh, because uh, the Joint Secretary has uh, a Parliament question to attend and he's got uh, uh, urgent work. So I think uh, without uh, wasting time, I would like to call up uh, Mr. Anurag Bajpai, who has enlightened us before, to talk today about uh, 4.0. Joint Secretary, sir, all yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kubel. Uh, it, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. You are. You are audible. Yes, yes sir. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is really uh, nice to be with you all today. Of course, uh, since morning I am attending all meetings only, and now I am going to Parliament after. 10 minutes or so. After this, I'll go to parliament. I'll rush to parliament. Uh, actually, in the morning, I thought I will not be in position to attend 
seeing the entire schedule today. But uh, anyhow, I could get time. Today's uh, theme is actually very relevant because it addresses gaps in defense production, and then it talks about industry poor and etc. We uh, we all know what is the commitment of government of India. That is the achieve to achieve a higher level of indigenization. Annual turnover to the tune of 25 billion US dollar by 2024-25. Exports to the tune of 5 billion US dollar. And import substitution. Means that the entire focus of government of India is on domestic defense manufacturing ecosystem. I would like to in invite the attention of the August gathering today to the announcement made by the Honorable Finance Minister in the recent budget. It is for the first time that, you know, uh, the allocation for domestic procurement is in the budget this time. And 68%, last year it was 64%. Now it is continuously rising. If we see in the last three, four years, the government has done tremendously in, uh, you know, promoting the domestic industries and ensuring domestic manufacturing by allocating the budget. Though it is 68%, but if you see the government intention to substitute the import altogether, it means it is likely to rise further. The other announcement if we see, that is the industry-led R&D. And the 25% of defense R&D budget earmarked for this, for the, current, uh, for the coming financial year. That is a you know, tremendous uh, effort of government of India or tremendous commitment of government of India. And the focus is now on, you know, industry-led research and development. Perhaps that was the need of the hour. Of course, the further mechanism and further details will be brought out by the Ministry of Defense uh, after some time. But the intention is very clear. The third part if we see in case of industry, that is the constitution, that the proposal for constitution of nodal umbrella body for testing and certification requirement. That was a long pending the industry's demand. And certainly it is likely to bring a complete change. It is likely to bring a paradigm shift in the testing regime. So from the budget, if we see, the budget announcement, if we see, the intentions have been made very clear by the government of India that how the Indian's defense ecosystem is going to look like. We know Industry 4 is revolutionary. Uh, it is a kind of a revolution uh, where it was brought and how the companies manufacture, control product quality and maintain supply chain as per the Industry 4. <coughs> and it is to be adopted by the other industry. Internet of Things, Cloud Computing, Additive manufacturing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, there are so many things which are actually driving technologies for the industries for industry for. We know uh, when we have to compete, it is quality. The quality of products as per standards. Certainly, this is one of the most important requirement in defense sector. Because the products are of complex nature, high end technology is there, and specific use is also there. Simulation is also the need of the art. 
for designing designing trial or testing of weapon system we all know that additive manufacturing can be used for part manufacturing with a special focus on quality thus use of industry 4 tools can help in achieving better tolerance in manufacturing of defense product with the use of automation defense industry including our defense public sector undertakings i believe that all are implementing industry 4 in tot based process automation monitoring control designing processing quality control predictive analysis so on i have been informed that bell has printed more than 1500 parts in 2021-22 alone at minimal lead time to be more competitive in the current market by use of additive additive manufacturing technology midhani is also working in the field of additive manufacturing especially to improve availability of raw material metal powders like i am sure that private industry must be active in adopting industry 4 processes or protocol if we recall that honorable raksha mantri rajnath singh has also laid foundation for defense technology and test center in lucknow in uh, uttar pradesh defense corridor in december 2021 it is a first of its kind defense technology and test center which has been set up to accelerate growth of the defense and aerospace manufacturing clusters in Uttar Pradesh defense industrial corridor. It will provide the technological base to develop defense products, keeping in mind the young innovators and the startups. What I have been told that it will consist six sub centers and i hope that uh, it is going to benefit the industry that is deep tech innovation and startup incubation center design and simulation center testing and evaluation center center for industry 4 digital manufacturing skill development center and business development center you all are aware about the draft Defense Production and Export Promotion Policy 2022, which has been positioned as ministry's overarching guiding document to provide a focused, structured, and significant thrust to defense production capabilities of the country. And no doubt it is for self reliance and exports only, which is ultimately going to affect our industrial ecosystem. And one of the important objectives of this policy is to create an environment that encourages research and development, rewards innovation, creates Indian IP ownership, and promotes a robust, robust and self-reliant defense industry. We all know about the achievements of IDEX. About 89, uh, you know, challenges have been, you know, under treatment at present. 63 startups are already working, 63 contracts were signed. And I'm happy to inform that in last two years, or with the efforts of last two years, about nine products now have reached to the stage of testing and trial. And one contract for procurement has already been signed by Indian Navy. So the results are now coming with the efforts which we have started basically two years back and now we are continuing with them to a next, we are trying to reach to the next level. There is another program of government of India that is Samarth Udyog Bharat, I hope that Many of us will uh, may be knowing. It is an industry for initiative of Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises. 
it encompasses manufacturers vendors and customers as the main stakeholders the experiential and demonstration centers for industry 4 have been proposed to spread awareness about it amongst the indian manufacturing industry these centers would have resource sharing common platform for industry 4 and network each other's resources so that utilization of resources is maximized so there are many you know uh, actions or reforms or budgetary you know actions towards the budgetary support many actions are being taken up by government of india and that shows the intention along with commitment because it is not just uh, words the actions are also being are visible for the industry. So I believe that all these actions would help our industrial ecosystem to grow and India will be in position to achieve the goals which we have visualized two, three years back of indigenization and make in India import substitution like that but this is not the end these are the you know starting actions we are looking for now india is looking for 2047 and in defense sector 10 years period is not a very long period we know particularly when we consider about when we, when we consider research and development so looking for 2047 is certainly a great idea because it gives you a proper space how our defense ecosystem would look like after some time. And the uh, actions or the, you know, uh, means proposals which have been taken up by the government of India are in those directions. With these words, uh, I'm really thankful to all for patient hearing and I congratulate the organizers that they have given me the time and they have uh, brought this uh, theme for discussion. I hope that a good, many good recommendations will come after uh, the successful, you know, uh, completion of the webinar, this webinar. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for that, uh, you know, wonderful uh, opening remarks and the, uh, uh, the 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 keynote address in which you actually talked about uh, actually 68 percent of um, uh, the the budget the capital budget is allocated for uh, the uh, the domestic defense industry and therefore as uh, as as a corollary we draw that there is a huge responsibility that's being placed on the on the domestic industry to actually deliver because at the end of the day we want to talk about the capability of the indian armed forces and that cannot be denuded at any time. And therefore, it's more relevant uh, today that uh, Indian industry adopts to uh, global standards of, of manufacturing. And, and I think that is what we are we are looking at at this point in time. While you did talk about the public sector, I must tell you that so the private sector is uh, equally fast and equally adaptive. I actually visited a company called Best Koki, uh, which is on the outskirts of Gurgaon. It has adopted uh, uh, in industry 4.0 and uh, actually uh, not just adopted they have also shown profits and they have shown value to their customers as to how uh, they can do you know uh, the the entire um, mechanization and you know using these cyber physical systems using the end of line um, end of line technologies and, uh, and and how they actually come and, and deliver uh, first time right and lnt does that first time right adani group does that first time right so today we've got a number of companies out here which are which are actually doing this and i think that's a very good thing you talked about the simulation and uh, and, and trial uh, simulation oriented trials and i think uh, i think we are we are looking at all this so while you talked about ai and ml uh, i just wanted to pick up a data point which i found in one of the reports of accenture uh, which said that uh, ai has a potential to add something like 957 uh, 
billion dollars to India's economy in 2035. We are talking of 2047 by 2035. This is the ad that that AI itself is going to do. And AI ML have combined capability to analyze big data, spot patterns, get insights, um, help make smart data's uh, driver drive decisions in real time. And I think we are we are in we are in good times with the uh, uh, with the initiatives taken by the government. And uh, so thank you very much. So, um, uh, Dr. Kansal, would you like to propose a vote of thanks to uh, Mr. Vajpayee because he will be leaving us now? Going. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me cut short first. Let me first give my heartly thanks to Shri Anurag Bajpayeeji, Joint Secretary, MOD. So your remarks are encouraging. Though things are known to, but you are revived and you are told in a very nice way all those target to the government unless anybody has a target that full the, the the target the the output is not achieved is the target for the marriage aid the, you work hard and you achieve the day so you win the target you're told the target of 25 billion dollars by 2025 5 billion dollars for exports defense exports for today it is it is it is a good driving force for the industry six eight percent capital budget sir it is no doubt it it is there then, of course, the government has done that 550 licenses the government of India is issued. This is also under your supervision, sir. I have seen you. I have attended meeting, meetings also. You are giving, uh, recommending the licenses, the licenses to Indian private industry. You have been involved, sir. UP corridor, dragging people and encouraging and promising a lot of things for Indian industry to come to the UP corridors. It is under your purview, so under your leadership, the Indian industry is definitely getting attracted. We thank you so much for coming over here to Ritsa and delivering good news and encouraging the people over there for the private industry. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, thing. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the little interruption because the Joint Secretary has to go to the Parliament. That's why. So we have uh, Mr. Vikas Balani, uh, Assistant General Manager, who's almost about started his presentation. Uh, Vikas, all yours. Respected panel and dear participants, it has been a pleasure to attend uh, this uh, webinar organized by SOCHAM and it's always a pleasure to hear to Mr. Vajpayee. Uh, government has opened up the aerospace and defense space in India for all the industries. And this is the opportune time where we actually have the opportunity to bring India on the forefront in terms of defense production as well. As we are emphasizing upon the uh, production 4.0, industry 4.0, where technology has enabled so many new interventions which can increase the efficiency manifold in terms of defense production as well. The era has been of startups. Last decade has seen tremendous uh, growth and real performance by the startups where we have seen 90 unicorns coming into the India, so much of investments going into the startups, so many fintechs coming in the sphere. All these kind of technology initiatives and these kind of new things, they can add and increase the efficiency of the manufacturing and definitely if we support them at the right stage, they can really uh, bring uh, not only the cost competitive competitiveness, but also quality and world class production in India. So all this where government is striving hard coming up with the great initiatives like defense exports for the last various years. Again, this year in March, we are going to hold it in uh, Gujarat. So there is really uh, we hope that sincerely uh, all focus of the even not only the large industries, but also MSMEs will also be there. Sidvi is uh, I come from Sydney. I'm sharing my screen with all of you. You have three minutes, uh, Mr. Vikas. Yes, that's good enough, sir. So basically, Sydney is a principal financial institution in India uh, for MSMEs. 
So basically, not only the financing role, but also supporting them by way of various promotional and developmental initiatives, uh, providing various funds of funds support to various new ventures coming into the uh, country. And various uh, programs of the government of India, we are also conducting as nodal agencies. In 2020, it's uh, to complement the efforts of the government of India, SIDBI came up with a detailed plan for aerospace and de defense sector. And we have partnered with uh, various consultancy firms where we have come up that we would be having a total bouquet of things for this kind of defense production and defense sector. So we are conducting with our partner institutions various outreach events along with various industry associations across the country. And uh, in that we are seeking feedback, what we can do for the sector as a whole, what new financial and credit products can be developed for the sector how we can give them hand holdings, how we can bring DPSUs, OEMs, and smaller MSMEs and mid-side MSMEs uh, together on the same board. So these kind of things, uh, also providing the various knowledge inputs, uh, knowledge material, industry insight, these kind of a and uh, tailor-made solutions, uh, that whole bouquet we have been working upon, and we have already touched upon at 20 major clusters all across India by various outreach events till now. And we would be doing more a detailed uh, web portal, which was under development that would also be launched very soon within this month itself, where MSMEs can showcase their capabilities and products to DPSUs and OEMs who are into defense production as their tier two and tier three vendors. And uh, this this portal is the kind of a, a place where they can all come together, whatever capabilities MSMEs have. They have they would be having an option to prepare a readiness assessment for their form itself. There they can uh, put and assess uh, uh, themselves across various parameters, which would be reflecting a rating to the industry, which would be available to various uh, DPSUs and OEMs, and they can later on contact them uh, for various interventions, various products and offerings which are available with them. So this portal uh, uh, which will not only be a kind of connector with them, but uh, industry landscape reports, various kind of uh, special interventions by different armed forces, all three parts, Navy, Army, and Air Force, those kind of updates and updates of various genders being, uh, uh, being published by all those organizations would also be available on the website. We have two specific products uh, which cater to the needs of these kind of units. One is arrived for the established units already in operations where rates of interest have been so competitive that they are even less than the rates of housing loan uh, loans. So rates are starting from 5.5% to 6.8% maximum. And these loans would be uh, ranging to, the, to a quantum of up to 10 crore rupees. Similarly, for greenfield projects, we have a loan quantum of up to rupees 20 crore rupees for MSMEs, where interest rates are again starting from 6% to 7.3% only. So these are the main uh, things, two main products, which are totally dedicated to defense and aerospace, Arise and Sthapan. More details can be seen at our website. These are the coordinates where we can be reached for any further details in the matter. The finance being the cog, wheel, a cog in the uh, wheel of economic activities. So obviously we have uh, today's <laughs> webinar after Vajpayee's address has started with this. So we hope that whatever best we could do for the MSMEs and other industries in the country, uh, we would be doing on the behalf of SIDBI and you are all welcome uh, to contact us and give us whatever uh, kind of suggestion and recommendations you are having, you can take a snapshot of these coordinates and get and can anytime get back to us. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Vikas. Uh, you just uh, sort of made it before the siren went off. So that's very nice of you. Thank you so much. Uh, the suggestion, if I have one, is that uh, if an industry wants to migrate to 4.0, for example, will you further reduce another 2% and give them a loan? That's the question, and that is probably a suggestion. You can, you can take it forward, because if India has to progress, companies like you have to reduce their profits towards the betterment of India and, and give them softer loans. 
Thank you very much. And uh, we have uh, Ashmita Sethi, the uh, uh, the president and country head, Pratt and Whitney, and she's going to tell us how global engine manufacturers take 4.0 so seriously, how they collect data, how they are going, how they analyze it, and how their engines keep running at any cost. Ashmita, all yours. Thank you so much, Colonel Kuber. Uh, I'm very honored to be here today to discuss this huge leap forward in manufacturing technology that the world is witnessing. Uh, my predecessors spoke about that just now. Uh, so I won't talk in detail about that, but just say, uh, we, we are in a world where we need to navigate this new world. And this leap in technology, again, is part of this new world. How, how do we implement Industry 4.0 in India? And I also want to talk a little bit about how our potential suppliers to companies like Pratt & Whitney and other OEMs as part of the Indian industry need to know about Industry 4.0. Uh, at Pratt & Whitney, we design, build, and service jet engines that power nearly 30% of the world's passenger aircraft. 34 armed forces around the world use our military engines. Now, jet engines are among the most complex, complicated machines built by man. The environment inside an engine is so hot that parts operate at temperatures much higher than the melting point of the alloys the parts are made of. When an engine operates, the space between rotating and stationary parts can sometimes be less than a hair's width. Each engine has thousands of moving pieces and they must all work seamlessly together on every engine every time. Manufacturing these technological marvels on time and on budget and high quality is a huge responsibility that only a few companies can do well. Our 95 years of experience developing these engines based on advancing customer demands. Customers want more for less, as all of you know. Customer demands for power, for range, have resulted in some marquee products of today including the 135 engine that powers the Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter, and then on the commercial side, our fuel-efficient geared turbofan for the commercial aviation aircraft. We use an extensive network of partners and suppliers who design and build components and parts for these products, and we work relentlessly with them to ensure that they are structured to meet our stringent safety, quality, schedules, and cost requirements. This presents a huge opportunity for the Indian aerospace defense industry to ramp up into production of more complex parts in what we call advanced manufacturing. For few, uh, for, you know, new companies, who wish to join our supplier network, as well as our long-term suppliers, there's a revolution taking place in advanced manufacturing under the concept of factory 4.0 or industry 4.0. For Pratt & Whitney, industry 4.0 is about smart manufacturing, automation, robotics, virtual reality, additive manufacturing, et cetera, enabled by digital technologies like IoT, model-based design, manufacture and inspection, and connected devices. Success in factory 4.0 requires both, you know, connected factories and the digital thread, which sort of enables that through the life cycle of the product and model-based manufacturing. In model-based manufacturing and engineering, processes are designed in a very collaborative 3D environment. Process decisions, uh, Colonel Kuber, you were talking about process industry also. And here I come to it. Process decisions are based on demonstrated capability using predictive tools like statistics or physics-based modeling. 
you know, you're not hitting in the blind, you're not looking at something, you're not starting something from scratch. You already have uh, templates on which you work, and those templates have demonstrated that capability beforehand. Then the capability of the manufacturing system is matched to the outputs requiring standard production system controls. Industry 4.0 means moving away from the previous two-dimensional drawing-based schematics to model-based design and engineering, whereby cost, quality, competitiveness is improved greatly. Rework and lead times are reduced and perfect clarity provided to all suppliers on design parameters. So connected factories drive speed, quality, and optimized cost, to say the least. At Pratt & Whitney, we have connected nearly 2,000 machines across our global enterprises, and we aim to connect over 5,000 total machines. This will enable real-time machine state monitoring, better data analytics, and improved overall product performance and efficiency. Every step, every step of this manufacturing process can be automated. That can be automated is now being transformed, providing improved safety and more consistent quality as well, and just-in-time inventory management and lower overall production cost. Separately, we have a core uh, excellence operating system, uh, which, uh, you know, the acronym means customer oriented results and excellence operating system. So uh, customer is the ultimate, the customer is looking for more efficiency, better cost, better performance. So our goal is to drive in industry leading operations performance build on foundation of common language, common processes, and common tools. Prior to industrial revolutions such as coal, iron, electricity, oil, etc., computers brought about incredible disruption and step change production, uh, step change disruption in productivity. With industry 4.0, the most adaptable companies will thrive and those organizations that have a culture of resilience and <coughs> empowerment in to absorb this, these systems and these processes will propel their business forward. And for India, I think we forecast a very strong ramp of production in all segments of our business. And there remains a great opportunity for all Indian manufacturing and engineering companies to join us in this very bright future. We intend to harness more and more of the talent and capability in India, much more than what we are doing now, growing our business while investing in local and the national economy in our efforts as we do that. Happy to take any questions later on. Thank you so much, Ashpita, for that. Uh, you know, from 2000 to 5000, you're going, you know, connecting all the 5000 machines. And when you spoke about, um, the temperatures in the in the in the in the engine, which is beyond the melting point of alloys, I only can uh, you know I, I I remembered Ajit and I said maybe we can give him a dialogue. Uh, Robert is called Pratt and Whitney ke engine mein dal do. <laughs> melt ho jayega, something like that so i think uh, uh, i think that's great when you connect about the 5000 odd uh, uh, engines and what type of uh, revenues you can actually bring in in fact i was seeing that uh, uh, the industrial data services uh, data which was spinning something like 3.5 billion pounds per annum for rolls royce i can speak because i i, I read their whole report uh, to understand this um, per annum, not only at RR, at, at the Rolls Royce, but even the customers benefited from the adoption of, of 4.0. And, and similarly, for, for Best Koki, a, a company that I actually visited, I don't know if a group captain PV Singh is here. He actually conducted us through and see uh, with, with a small company like, like Best Koki, it's not a very big company, it's a very small company. And they have adopted that. And today they are talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
real good uh, value that they are able to bring. So today, we, you know, we have uh, we have small companies. You talked about your ecosystem and you said your your supplier network. And there are companies out here uh, which are in electronic systems, design and manufacturing, specializing in strategic electronics, serving the aerospace, defense and nuclear for more than 25 years. I'm talking about uh, SLN technologies. And uh, they have uh, products like the avionic system, solid state flight, flight data recorders, a standby engine system display, which are all uh, sort of um, today flying and automated test equipments, antenna controls, electronic products, um, uh, antenna control, servo mechanism, and, um, and and see, they are built for Arjun, they are built for Sukhoi, they are built for MI-17, they are built for LCA, LUH, LH. So I think um, uh, a, a very good company out there, SLN, I've actually visited them about uh, three, four years ago. And uh, in those days, uh, probably I used to visit them very, very often just to understand uh, as to what ethos a small company like S SLN can have. Uh, they have received the national award uh, uh, for R&D twice from the government of India, the MSME department and uh, um, uh, uh, DR Subramaniam, who's here, who's the managing director, the co-founder at the MD at SLN. And he believes that, you know, it's all about indigenous design, development and manufacture. And um, he's been the chairman of the Empowered Committee uh, of SME in CIT, vice chairman of the Aeronautical Society of India, Bangalore, elected member of the CI Karnataka State Council, director of aerospace and well, um, there are a number of awards, Lifetime Achievement Award from CID, Udyog Patra Award, and a Friend of Mission Reach from uh, the Department of Science and Technology. Um, an engineer, um, Subramaniam, all yours. Thank you so much, uh, Colonel Kubair, sir, and uh, good afternoon, um, the panelists and uh, participants. Uh, implementation of Industry 4.0 in MSME sector uh, itself is a big subject. Implementation is, uh, is slow, as all of you know, in MSME, as it requires uh, technology upgradation, which itself is a big challenge, which opens up a larger uh, discussion. Uh, we need to sort out uh, many ground level uh, issues. Uh, Industry 4.0 uh, need not be of course, it is uh, digital technology and all that, but uh, to also meet uh, that kind of uh, technology level, our business practices also need to get upgraded. I just take a few points, uh, pointers from uh, Mr. J, uh, Mr. Anurag Bajpai JS in his uh, keynote address. He mentioned uh, strong domestic defense ecosystem, industry led R&D, exports of $5 billion USD testing and certification and uh, quality. Uh, even in the previous thing also, I spoke about R&D innovation and product development. Uh, I had mentioned Indian industry, particularly MSME is capable. They have upgraded their skills. They have upgraded uh, their uh, uh, infrastructure, but still many times uh, the companies, customers are using them only to build to print jobs. They have to believe and offload more and more build to uh, build to specification and software development, product development, uh, this kind of uh, jobs. More collaboration is required from DRDO, CSIR, and all these uh, government uh, R&D labs to mentor MSME companies uh, to lift their capabilities uh, to global levels and the technology upgradation. Uh, the country's R&D spend itself, if you see, is very less. Our R&D spend is less than 1%, maybe 0.7.8% of GDP, whereas uh, many countries are uh, going over 3%, 25 to 3.5%. It's a very, very large, vast difference. And uh, this needs a um, uh, very clear uh, focus. And second thing, uh, the business volume, if you say, okay, 68% we have increased, but finally, how much of it is coming to MSMEs? Uh, today, we are talking about uh, the Canada, uh, Canada, Canadian defense industry, MSMEs share is 92%, US MSME share is 64%. Where do we stand with a lot of difficulty? We are meeting 20, 25%. I think uh, uh, we need to increase uh, the outsourcing to MSMEs up to 
that is the only way msmes can uh, bring in um, industry 4.0 investment and uh, uh, move towards that today the situation is uh, the number of companies are more capabilities are more the amount of business is less for the survival sake they are killing themselves by undercoating a very very low val uh, values if you take up uh, there are a lot of delays in indian uh, you know execution execution is a big problem okay added to that uh, recently global semiconductor shortages the components what we used to get in four weeks eight weeks today we have to wait up to 52 weeks 60 weeks it has become a big problem in such a situation if we see our uh, in you know in defense and uh, aerospace the inspection third party inspection certification approvals is a major thing process and product inspection approvals are adding very very high delays agencies like djka they always say they have less manpower and the industry have to wait for them we we actually propose accreditation of private inspection agencies so that cycle times will be dramatically improved and later maybe parallelly we can work on self certification and other things the biggest problem here is certification and inspection agencies are outside delivery loop they just don't care about your delivery and vendor has to depend on so many agencies and finally only vendor is responsible for uh, uh, for delivery clear policy is required also for obsolescence management most of the products are designed earlier they come for build to print we get stuck in uh, obsolescence management there is no policy and we invest money and we just wait for uh, the clearances so msme discussion cannot end uh, without touching upon the financial issues as all of you know due to long cycles of order placing uh, by dpsus and services the material costs are going up very very high customers does not understand any uh, price escalations there should be a mechanism because uh, we we take quotations and port and six months eight months order will come the market prices have gone up by 10 20 percent and it is meaningless to execute such orders there should be some policy to accommodate such uh, changes i mentioned so many uh, delays most of it is attributed to inspections and certifications what is the meaning for ld we practically end up paying ld in every case i think either we must abolish ld or we must bring it down to 2% post post pandemic all foreign suppliers are demanding 100% advance along with the purchase order even though 24 weeks 48 weeks 50 weeks lead time they they are insisting on 100% advance whereas our customers are not prepared we are still talking about 45 days after supply after acceptance 45 days i think this this industry cannot sustain with this our customers also must pay at least 30 percent advance mandatorily and they must bring down the 45 days cycle when the 45 days cycle was implemented there was no pandemic there was no global crisis no semiconductor shortage and all that today we cannot stick to that and we must bring down within two weeks max all payments must be uh, must be cleared sir and uh, mr watchpay mentioned about uh, exports which is very important obviously but to export the companies have to be nurtured for global level but uh, in the in the interest of uh, following the process we go on repeatedly uh, tendering the same item again and again and again there is no opportunity for companies to uh, uh, get sufficient expertise to go, go global i think we have to adopt mentor mentor system we have to mentor companies the psus and large companies have to mentor msme so that uh, their skills and their capabilities are brought to global level automatically they can the 5 billion dollar uh, exports will become reality there are many more other things uh, like skills and uh, uh, other things which requires more time 
I'll stop here. If any questions are there, I will take. Thank you uh, so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Subramaniam. Actually, when and when we allow any SME to speak, and especially when SME starts speaking, I actually start looking for my handkerchief. You know, a, a tears come out of my eyes when you say that, you know, you're prepared to pay 100% uh, on that side to your suppliers who are supplying your material. And you are very happy with somebody giving you even a 30%. Of course, they are hardly giving you even a 5% today. But even when you are asking, you're asking only for 30%. That's a very large half. And I think in place, I would say at least 80% advance to MSMEs should be given. Why not? All, all these big companies make huge profits. And uh, the minimum they can do is to give a, a good advance to an MSME, um, a trusted MSME, which they have done the, the due diligence and all that. You have said that the outsourcing should be 40%. If I were you, I would have asked for higher number. But then that 40 number is very uh, uh, intriguing to me. So when you say 40%, how many MSMEs have, uh, have gone to, you know, if I put a decimal in between 4.0? So then that question comes up and we do not know when we actually go down to that figure, we find that maybe it's not so encouraging. And of course, uh, companies are there, which have gone there and, uh, you know, and then you talked about uh, the waiting period of the competence. You talked about accreditation. You talked about, I think there is a lot going on there. And I think the government is already uh, encouraging, is already encouraging self-certification. They've already, uh, uh, they're, they're going ahead with the accreditation, third party inspections and so on. They are trying to get DGQA out of the loop as much as they can, and uh, I think that's that's very uh, that's very encouraging. So I must say that you know, when when you say you have to pay LD in almost every case, I'm I'm surprised when these big companies do not pay LD. Why do they charge LD on you? So um, well, there is there is a lot to learn from that, and thank you very much. And here, ladies and gentlemen, I have to turn to another XNDA. Uh, I think every time we have an XNDA who's coming from somewhere here and there, and um, uh, another XNDA like me, um, uh, but uh, unlike me, he is um, he's got his higher education. He's done his economics uh, major from uh, US. He is a person who talks about innovative funding systems. He thinks about how, how you can generate funds in a in a fund strapped uh, industry like this, or in a fund strapped economy. And uh, he is uh, presently the commercial lead, rightly so, because he is uh, he has some innovative ideas over there. Uh, I have great pleasure in inviting my friend Partha Chaudhary. Partha Roy Chaudhary, all yours. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for that uh, nice introduction. Uh, let me just uh, bring out some point here uh, about the digital revolution and the industrial revolution we are talking about. So industry 4.0 advancements are uh, revolutionizing the whole manufacturing and production in many industries. But for defense system, uh, manufacturing is just the beginning. So as Lockheed Martin accelerates in its ongoing transformation with cutting edge technologies, and the new ways of working, it's looking at the bigger picture. So that this to achieve this truly disruptive innovation, we have to think holistically about, uh, uh, I should say, the transformation. Above all, our customer mission matters most to all of us. The mission-driven transformation is looks is not just an internal operation. It's a new way of innovation that will enable us to join the all all domain operations and uh, making our customer more capable. We heard uh, our Honorable Joint Secretary Department of Defense Production about a holistic transformation strategy, and he's also challenging the industry to do the same. He's talking a lot about digital engineering, advanced software development, open system architectures. Lockheed Martin is aligning those priorities to accelerate our own transformation and support the mission. Let me talk about how we do our digital and model based engineering. Building on a years long of transformation, Lockheed has revolutionized its approach to digital model based engineering uh, that ensures a system that fully supports the mission, making it easier for the, you know, easier for the conduct strategy engineering to trade off and manage some changes. Uh, we can call it a digital twins uh, that create in de detailed models as built in system, use machine learning and data analytics. Uh, the word we call it as uh, fly before you buy. So you are predicting practically the performance in the field, optimizing maintenance and streamlining the production. 
a very interesting uh, uh, series that I was I saw yesterday in Netflix was called a good doctor when a small African boy uh, is uh, given a, a, a charitable organization brought him to a US hospital and the doctors are thinking whether they can save him or not. They have a tough tough time seeing this a very small boy and they the heart is totally unrepairable what they can do. So they uses a, a model, a digital model of his heart by AR, VR, practices on that, sees the result and then goes on the operation table. So I, I could really uh, make that story, uh, I should say, a learning lesson for all of us is the same way what we are trying to do today. It gives you a second chance, which uh, is seldom possible in the normal world. So this kind of a multidiscipline integration, which enables a real time analysis of uh, multiple aspects of a system's performance, uh, the aerodynamics, uh, thermal properties, which uh, right now uh, uh, Raytheon also mentioned. So those analysis used to occur one at a time, but today at a high performance computing system, they can run simultaneously to dramatically cut design the time. So these are the technological advancements that uh, 4.0 has brought, and we are already using it in Lockheed. Some of our program integrates advanced computer aided designs for product life cycle management tools in aeronautics. Uh, this is to accelerate the design and enable greater use of uh, robotics, 3D printing, automated quality inspections. And this is uh, all because of the need of the customer that we have today. Mention not that we also uh, transform our supply chain manufacturing design phases and also have a better output. An example of CH-53 helicopter program, which has embraced digital engineering, so the digital engineering, the designs based on 3D and are maintained through a manufacturing assembly process. We cut costs through it. Not only that, we improve quality and avoid costly rework. I'm talking about the next generation trans, uh, next generation software. We're transforming everything in a way to develop uh, software tools and processes. This is not about only our tools and processes. It's also about the culture and the training. Those are also has to be changed in a in a in a better way, an accelerated uh, software development process is enabling uh, rapid prototyping for newer capabilities. I just uh, heard uh, Midhani. Uh, somebody mentioned that Midhani is going ahead. So they are actually trying to make a metal powder. So why they are actually completing the whole process of uh, 3D printing right from the metal powder to the final product, and that will uh, help a lot of engine manufacturing company to test and trial uh, without giving up uh, setting up a huge assembly line and a huge cost. Uh, Lockheed Martin launched uh, a program for nanosat designs to test a new software defined architecture uh, which will enable artificial intelligence, data analytics, cloud networking and satellite communication in much better way. We have also developed um, a modular open system architecture for omnipresent connectivity. Just imagine one of those commercial technologies 5G, imagine a network which is 100 times the bandwidth and a fraction of delay of current cellular networks. Uh, that's the promise of 5G is for tactical forces. So we are trying to connect war fighters at the edge. It always been a tough communication challenge. Tomorrow's 5G networks is promising to deliver a bandwidth connectivity and data to the edge. Uh, important point here, which I like to bring here, is that uh, according to the McKinsey survey, 130 firm representative from various industries in China and Chinese manufacturing firms had great enthusiasm and expectation from Industry 4.0. But only 57% of the Chinese enterprises were fully prepared for the industry 4.0. This global study showed that uh, that is far lower from the United States, which is 71% and Germany at 68%. So I was thinking of how much of our industry in India is actually ready for the industry 4.0. The major reason of manufacturing firm may not understand the value of these technologies and actually seldomly using it in, in kind of a, a isolative way. The vision of AI aiming with a mission funded transformation is a decisive mission advantage for uh, all of us in a joint all domain operation, demanding a holistic view of the whole battle space. And this is not only a digital ready workforce, we are trying to accelerate our economy today through this industry 4.0 and additive manufacturing. Thank you so much, Kubir, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Partha. In fact, it was very interesting that you you brought out uh, you know edge, uh, you brought out that uh, you know the good doctor, and uh, <clears throat> the accelerated prototyping. And I thought uh, I should mention at this point in time that Lockheed Martin is actually using 
uh, data from the connected systems to create, innovate, replicate components, products, and entire programs as part of a totally integrated system where data threads come together to form a digital tapestry. I talked about it in my initial remarks too. Uh, and this digital tapestry actually brings people, processes, and tools into a common information framework across the life cycle. And uh, this type of a free flow of digital information eliminates manual transfer of data and the costly errors that go into it. And uh, with digital tapestry, Lockheed's designs can be printed, form fit and function, and checked before manufacturing and helping the lowering the cost. And I must also tell you at this time that, you know, uh, I mean, since I I, I did uh, some some little work uh, with, with Rolls-Royce on this. So Rolls-Royce partnered with uh, Metallization uh, University of Nottingham and the Aerospace Technology Institute and developed Flare, which is a pair of snake robots, you know, like a snake, they'll go into which will aid in maintenance without removing the engine. The snake robots actually themselves are flexible enough to travel through an engine before working together to carry out patch repairs uh, to the damaged thermal uh, barrier coatings. Also, Rolls-Royce is working with uh, Hubbard uh, to demonstrate potential future technology of collaborative swarm robots that crawl through the insides of an engine, each of them 10 millimeters in diameter deposited the center of an engine via a snake robot and then perform visual inspection hard to reach. And therefore, I think uh, we are we are in very good times, Partha, when, uh, the, the good doctor. So if, if good doctor is a good story, and I think uh, we are in we are in those times where when you talk of Indian industry and why Indian industry, whether it is ready, when you were wondering, I was wondering along with you. And I must tell you that when the government starts pumping in a lakh crores uh, in terms of 68 percent of uh, uh, the domestic uh, of the, the capital budget to domestic industry. Well, I think the domestic industry will have no choice but to probably adapt to these standards. Otherwise, they will not be able to deliver it first time. Right. And therefore, their costs will increase. Now, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are here with um, the new entrants in the aerospace and defense field. Uh, the Adani Group, they entered with a bang and they have one of the smartest facilities set up in Hyderabad. They are doing the UAVs. They are exporting them today. And uh, even while the Indian Armed Forces are not buying them, they are, they are already uh, sending it outside of the country. And on one side with that, on the other side with the uh, the pet project of uh, Ashok Vadawan, who actually started this whole thing of PLR and, uh, you know, where he manufactures guns, small, big, everything, and ammunition is getting into ammunition now. And I think uh, uh, this 4.0 may be more, uh, more, more uh, useful to uh, companies like yours. What say Ashok? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kubeir. Uh, thank you always for, um, you know, a great introduction and uh, leading the session so well um, uh, to our participants in the panel and friends. Um, yeah, I, I come from Adani Group and um, we have always pioneered and whatever we have done, we have tried to be ahead in the game um, in, um, um, in our field. So when we take into manufacturing or defense and aerospace, uh, we are looking in best in class um, uh, advanced manufacturing as well as the best in class technology coming in. What we have done in the past few years is one is to have product lines, which is small arms ammunition, um, you know, the advanced um, uh, uh, UAVs and counter UAVs. But what we have done in manufacturing is that we have divided the whole field, what we are talking today into three parts. One is digitize and automation of manufacturing. How do we make sure that every sector or every part of our manufacturing uh, is not uh, uh, giving us uh, or, or conventional manufacturing, but it goes into digitization and has the maximum automation, which is required for the best in class product to come out. The second part is bringing in the advanced manufacturing and technologies like additive manufacturing or or uh, manufacturing capability where speed of manufacturing increases. So say, for example, a particular product which was being made in 30 minutes. Today, we are bringing in the best in capability to manufacture in eight minutes. Sometimes the new ammunition line, which we are looking at, uh, which was being done in 30 minutes, the same thing can be manufactured in eight seconds. So that kind of equipment which comes in, just not look at the, uh, the quality aspect of it, but looks at the, the speed at which you manufacture first time right and the speed of delivery with the cost. So say, for example, if you're doing it at 30 minutes and today, if you're doing it in eight seconds or, 
or, or 30 seconds, the product, the capex may be higher, but the per piece cost reduces. So that helps you to move ahead with it. And then moving ahead with digitization, automation, advanced manufacturing to industry 4.0. Now, industry 4.0, like uh, Colonel Kobe when introduced, is, is basically talking about data, where you are uh, looking at data in all respect, which helps you not just in quality, but in maintainability, um, where you can preempt uh, the uh, breakage of machines, breakage of tools, breakage of the process at any moment of time because you're collecting enough data which is with artificial intelligence you can analyze it and you can uh, you can actually go down to traceability of the fault and before the fault occurs you can fix it and which we are using today not just in our manufacturing i'll just give you an example in our solar uh, sitting in Ahmedabad, we have a, a, a team of people specialists which are sitting at we have, you know, um, acres and acres of solar fields. You can actually pinpoint, go down to a solar cell, and you can find out why that solar cell is not working, how it can be fixed and go it. So we are taking, as I said, we are taking um, digitization, data collection to from solar to that level to going out to manufacturing where every level the data is going to come out and you can take into account and look at quality, you can look at maintainability, you can look at traceability, you can do it first time delivery, you can, every accessibility comes in, in your pumps, where you can actually monitor it and do it. So, dividing the whole thing and saying, okay, we will have digitization and automation in our manufacturing, which is uh, getting the best in class equipment, moving into best in class technology, which says, that a pro how can we make the product faster? How can we actually give it in the right period of time? And then going into manufacturing 4.8, collecting the data and bringing it at one platform so that you can actually monitor and correct it. So what are we looking as output for all of it? So you do all of it. What are you looking for? You see, in defense manufacturing, the most important piece is not to make the right product and give it to the customer. You have to make the product, give it, which consistently pro pro provides the same quality. It gives you the reliability that the soldier or our, work, uh, our forces, when they actually use it, can rely on it and live with it, that you know it's not gonna fail me. Uh, and has the repeatability to deliver the same quality. So it's not that for the first few pieces or the first few uh, uh, years it gives you, but it gives you, at the end of life, which is say 15 years of a life, gives you the same uh, repeatability or reliability in the product. So that is what we are looking at. Normally uh, in defense manufacturing, the way we analyze it, it's it's uh, uh, it's the highest level of uh, of manufacturing because in a, if a doctor fails once, for a doctor, he may be six sigma. He is doing 0.3, 0 0.00034, uh, failures in a million opportunities, but for the patient, he fails once. We are going down to that level and saying, if a product of ours fails in the field, when a soldier or of a, uh, uh, forces are using it, that particular failure is going to cost life. So in a automotive industry where you would want to get in the best of class manufacturing, the, li the liability is a particular value, but in this it's life. So it's like, Healthcare manufacturing, where a particular product cannot fail. Similarly, in defense manufacturing, not just aircrafts, obviously aircraft fails, it's a failure, but every single product of ours, be it a small ammunition, which does not fire at the right moment of time, it could cause a, a life and death situation. So that is the way we look at defense and uh, aerospace manufacturing, and we are not compromising in each one of them. We are going and working from digitization to manufacturing 4.0, and implementing it. So when we bring in the ammunition plant, which is going to be producing 100 million rounds, it comes with manufacturing 4.0 built in, uh, which means data collection at any every moment of time. Um, uh, you know, uh, at at our level, at our leadership level, at our level, when we look at manufacturing, manufacturing, getting into defense and space, though we are new, but it is like healthcare manufacturing. 
And I would leave it there and say, when we do this, we expect similar with uh, MSMEs and MSMEs. We don't expect them to be at that level, but we support them to come up to that level to be able to provide uh, uh, the parts which it is. So we are looking at not just R, we are looking at an ecosystem which will be able to deliver the best in class to our forces. Thank you. Ashok, thank you very much. You actually answered the question that uh, Mr. Subramaniam raised some time back, whether, you know, these companies will mentor us at all. And here is Adani Group, which is standing in front of saying, yes, of course, we'll mentor. We are going to stand with them and we are going to take them forward. You talked about digitization, manufacturing and reducing the time from 30 minutes to eight minutes. And I was told by my colleague, Commander Ajay Panwar, he visited this hero factory in, in Gurgaon. And I believe they, they assemble an entire mat motorcycle in 20 seconds. And that's because of uh, this entire uh, 4.0 adoption in the factory. Did he say 20 seconds or 30 seconds? Doesn't matter, maybe 10 seconds here and there. But that's the time in which an entire motorcycle can be uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, assembled. You talked about the capex versus the per cap per uh, per piece cost. I think that's a very very interesting point that you brought about. And there comes the advantage of uh, adapting to 4.0. So industries that are thinking they know they are going to invest uh, money in going to 4.0, they should remember this that it's going to be per piece cost that's going to reduce, and therefore the profitables are going to be very very high. You talked about data and you talked about the quality, maintainability, traceability, and you know, your solar cell where you can easily pinpoint in the huge farm. I was thinking, is there a possibility that we can use uh, 4.0 to uh, pinpoint faults in the DAP? I mean, it just occurred to me while you were talking because I do not know in the entire melee of the DAP trials, this, that, I mean, I don't know, and why programs get delayed if we can use something like an industry 4.0 or DAP 4.0 to fix that, that will be very good. It will make it faster. It will be right at the point in time. You talked about consistency, reliability, and I was very happy that you we connected with what Partha said some time ago, a good doctor, and you talked about a good soldier. And uh, when a doctor fails, I think uh, there is one patient, uh, whatever 0 0.014%, whatever it is, but there is one patient. When a soldier fails, it is a number of lives that are getting are getting lost. So, I mean, I can give you a very live example from, uh, from Kupwada when one of my friends was there and, you know, uh, he pressed the trigger onto a militant and it didn't fire. And the militant got the better of him. And um, well, it was it, 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 it was a question of uh, fist fight and uh, power and uh, determination that he actually overpowered the militant. And of course, he was uh, he was uh, awarded the Sena Medal for that. That's a different issue. But yes, uh, you talked about the uh, when you do hundreds of millions of rounds and you're going to uh, you, it's going to be 4.0 already. I was wondering whether our ordnance factories are four, anywhere near 4.0 at that point in time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a very, very good rendition by Ashok Padawan. Adani is entering with a bank in the defense sector. Um, I have heard of soldierly scholars. Um, we had one talking some time back, uh, which is Partha. Uh, I've not heard, heard of sailorly scholars. I don't know whether they call them sailorly scholars. Uh, well, uh, uh, there is, uh, here is uh, my, my very dear friend, uh, um, a, a Captain uh, Vikram Mahajan. Uh, uh, who's been in the Indian Navy and who's been a scholar of sorts, uh, besides being a wonderful sailor. And uh, he has been at the in the forefront of the entire uh, uh, procurement process. He was leading from the uh, headquarter ideas side. And uh, I know the amount of initiatives they took in those days in, in bringing about uh, a lot of transformation in the in the entire uh, thing. He writes, uh, he, he has written a number of articles, number of re recently number of them on Indo-US relationships. And uh, he is a person with a thinking hat. Over to you, Vikram. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the kind introduction. So, uh, uh, this this topic, I'll be very frank, was a little confusing for me. I didn't know whether to talk about uh, addressing gaps in defense procure, uh, production. Should I talk about uh, industry 4.0 or additive manufacturing? Uh, well, I think there's enough being said on uh, 4.0 and additive manufacturing. And uh, so, I think I'll just stick to my core uh, topic of uh, addressing gaps in defense production because by the end etc i'm guessing that was just an example uh, at the title of it so uh, and i think if you are if we want to talk about gaps in any uh, field i think we need to be a little more candid and i'll do it slightly differently this time and i will do it with an example 
So I'm I'm not going to that that there are there are millions of gaps that we can talk about. But I'll just stick to stick to three gaps, and I will give example of a country, which is not U.S. and uh, which is South Korea. And why I will give example of South Korea is because South Korea is quite like India, wherein uh, you know it's surrounded by water, and it has got an unfriendly neighbor. It's same as India. The only slight difference being that uh, South Korea is the size of one third of the state of Maharashtra. So uh, coming to the gaps, I think I'll start with the, as uh, uh, Kubair Sen mentioned about the procurement process. I think the first issue that I would like to bring out is that, you know, uh, if we really want to address a gap in defense production, I think we need to delineate two things very clearly. One is the uh, capability building of the armed forces. And second is the Atman Nirbhar Bharat. And one should not be incumbent upon the other. And I think if we read the para 24 of chapter two, it very clearly brings out that one, that the process is so designed that in case an item is not ready, you should not, uh, the, the, you should stick the, the entire, the categorization has been built in a manner to, to cater for the type of timeline so that the capability is not compromised. Now, if you look at South Korea, what is South Korea doing towards this? The example that I can give you is that in for the budget of 2022 for South Korea, they have earmarked projects that in this budget, we will be buying this, 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 which is a very sensible and smart thing to do. We are a little away from that doing uh, the same thing in India. One of the items in the budget is F-35s. And this is when they have a prototype ready to fly this year, a fifth gen fighter, which is KF-21, which is ready to fly this year. They are still going ahead because they do not want to compromise capability building with the indigenous procurement or uh, you know, prioritization of uh, domestic production. That is the first point. Second point, I'm just sticking to the topic because I think we are a uh, little, the webinar should have got over by five and it's already five. So at the second point I want to bring out, uh, I remember Mr. Duvedi was there in the last webinar that we spoke together a couple of months ago, uh, Dr. Duvedi, sorry. And uh, he did mention, uh, you know, uh, how a DRDO could do with a little more budget. So, uh, Coming to budget, frankly, I got an email today. It's been 10 days and we have threadbare, uh, you know, studied budget budget. But one thing that catches my eye every time is how much budget is allocated for R and D. This has been spoken before. And I would just like to bring out that, you know, even this time, the R and D budget was just about, uh, you know, making it to the, uh, inflation. And even there, it has been, you know, split 25% uh, has been earmarked for academia and startups <coughs> and the private sector, which is wonderful. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that's bad, but I just want to compare uh, when we talk of comparison, you know, if you look at uh, South Korea, which has got the budget of two third, the budget of India, there's 71, there are about 44 thereabouts, their defense budget is $4 billion plus, which is three times more than the defense budget of India. I think we need to realize that we indigenization, if we seriously need to do indigenize, if we seriously need to make an India, we need to seriously start spending more on uh, investing more in R&D. And we need to start, uh, you know, start doing away with, you know, it's, it's not gonna happen by changing, adding a new categorization in the DPP or removing a categorization. I think that's, you need to seriously start investing more in R&D. That is my second point. And the third point that I want to make is just about uh, 10 days ago, it was there in the front of every newspaper was the fact that, you know, we are selling $360 million worth of Brahmos missile system to Philippines. Everybody was lauding it. And there is another missile system that I would like to talk about is, uh, uh, the uh, uh, I'm forgetting the Israeli JV, which we have uh, uh, the uh, LRSAM system, uh, which has been installed in the Kolkata class. So uh, Barak 8, sorry. 
So I think uh, if, if you look at uh, both these systems, Barak 8 has already been exported to one country. There are six other countries which are invested, uh, which are interested in, uh, uh, you know, uh, buying uh, Barak 8. I, I think if we look at, if we take a step back and look at the success stories that we've had, vis-a-vis -vis not such successful products that we've made, I think we seriously need to start looking at JVs. We need to start looking at collaborations, not just with countries, but with companies. And towards that, I the live example that I can give, as I was talking about uh, South Korea, the KF21. KF21 is a collaboration between Indonesia and Korea. And there is, uh, there is then they have tied up with Lockheed Martin. And why Lockheed Martin? Because Lockheed Martin, uh, there is a lot of offset uh, which is there. And towards the offset, Lockheed Martin is helping them build the uh, KF21. Now, how is this beneficial overall? I think any JV benefits primarily with three. There are a lot of benefits, but the three primary benefits that happens with JV is firstly, you get good technology, advanced technology. Second is you are not reinventing the wheel. You are not making mistakes and learning from them. You are already learning from mistakes that have already been made. And third, and the big, very big, very big factor is the timeline. And uh, you, you know, you really save a lot of time if you have collaborations. We have offers, and I can give you not just South Korea. There are other, uh, you know, companies that the two the two uh, aircraft that cleared uh, the MMRC uh, one was the uh, you know the Eurofighter and the Rafale. And as of today, they both are looking at a sixth gen fighter. Uh, the uh, UK is looking at making Tempest. And uh, France is looking at uh, making FCAS, but they are not doing it alone. UK is doing it along with Sweden and Italy. And France, despite having made Rafale, is doing it with Spain and Germany. So I think there are lessons to be learned here that how JVs are important. And we need to, uh, uh, going forward, we need to uh, you know look at that, uh, look at forming JVs. Now, coming back to where I come from, that is US India, I cannot not mention it. So just towards closing, I think we have a very strong uh, relationship between US and India. We have done we have done amazing uh, work uh, towards towards uh, you know the collaboration that we've had in military strategically, and we've had great platforms which we've got from US. But going forward towards Make in India, I think what we really need to push forward is we've had a DTTI which has been ten years in the making. We have signed one project. We need to. <coughs> push that, get more projects towards co-production, co-development. And uh, there is an ISA which has uh, been signed, but which has been formulated. Last year, we heard uh, Mr. Vajpayee at one of the seminars talking as to how we can go ahead with uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, formalizing it so that better transfer of technology can take this place through ISA. And all this will actually broadly help in uh, the core aim of, uh, you know, more, uh, enhancing defense manufacturing in India. That's all from me, sir. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. Uh, in fact, we heard Partha talking about the good doctor. We heard Ashok talking about the good soldier and you are a good sailor. So I think we are, uh, you know, and, and, and a very scholarly sailor. And when you talked about the para 24 of the, of the, of the DPP and, you know, then I see, you know, on one side, we have a DPP, we have an RFI, AON, RFP, trials, this, that. And one fine day, Modi says, I'm cancelling 90 programs because we don't like this. And, you know, all those four years, five years of effort has gone in one shot. It is in the air. And I mean, I do not know uh, what, I mean, I'm sure there is a lot of wisdom behind such a decision, but uh, I will leave it there um, without uh, creating more controversies over that. But the point is capabilities of the Indian Armed Forces is what you talked about. And I think that's important. Um, uh, Atmanirbhar is a great story. Capability of the, uh, capabilities of the Indian Armed Forces are very, very paramount and they both have to meet. It cannot be parallel lines. And therefore, I think that meeting point is something that we've got to decide and find out where it is and um, how South Korea does. I think that's a very wonderful thing you talked about. Instead of saying, uh, I'll give you 68%, they said, I'll give you 68 programs. I think that's a very nice thing. So I, if I can do 68 programs this year, so the industry knows these are the 68 programs, no matter what the cost. And uh, the, uh, the, the government knows, the armed forces know that 69th program is not coming in. They are prepared for that. The uh, the industry knows they are prepared for that. Where people like Subramaniam who go and pay 100% advance to uh, raw material surprises, 
the, he is prepared for that. He knows for 68 programs I can pay. He knows that he'll get only 10%, 15% advance from these big guys. He will suffer that as MSME. But yes, but then there is a predictor. You know, you talked about that entire digitization. We are talking about 4.0 digitization. So you, you can predict uh, and, 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 you know, book your loss and also book your profits. You talked about Brahmos, it's a great example. You talked about Barakate, a fantastic example. You talked about JVs, but then I must tell you there are 47 JVs today in the in the defense sector. I do not know how many of them are actually successful. I do not know if JV as a concept is a successful model, or we should look at successful JVs and see how they have done and therefore do it accordingly. But there are some very collaborative models that are coming up in the market, like we talked about AOP, uh, where you know there are these large companies who can integrate the capabilities within the ecosystem and uh, and, and project themselves forward to the MOD. Uh, and, and I think these models also we have to look at their uh, consortium approach, where uh, the concept of AOP will come in, and I think that's very good. Um, the DTI, DTTI, you talked about, and I think, uh, I, I mean, I don't know, a lot of noise has been made over the years, but just one program has been signed. Well, it, it doesn't speak very great about the program, but I think, yes, we need to put in more effort. I know you've written on that. Uh, I know you've written on the Indo-US relationships and how we can take it forward. I think this is the time to do it. Very good example you gave of UK uh, collaborating with uh, Sweden and Italy, uh, France collaborating with Spain and Germany. I think uh, Atman Nirbhar also means collaboration, collaborative Nirbharata. So we have to depend, interdependence is probably more important than uh, independence. And interdependence creates friendships, interdependence creates relationships, interdependence creates power. And I think that's a very, very valid point you bring about and it set me thinking. Thank you, so sailorly scholar. Thank you for that. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have today uh, to give you the uh, special address, um, the chairman of one of the largest DPSUs, a DPSU which actually makes all these things we have talked about, these missiles, uh, um, you know, uh, ATGNs, uh, they, um, if you want to talk about a, 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 a company uh, which is formidable in the South, South Asian region, and which which actually integrates a lot of technologies, which integrates a lot of skill, which integrates a lot of uh, effort in in putting all those. You know, a, a DRDO will go and uh, will will create a test, and you know they say on Chandipur we did this, on that we did that. But somebody has to realize that in production, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is Bharat Dynamics. And I have great pleasure in inviting Commodore uh, um, Siddharth Mishra, who is the chairman and managing director, Bharat Dynamics. Over to you, Commodore. Thank you very much, uh, Colonel Kube. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as uh, you have been uh, listening uh, on uh, Industry 4.0, and uh, we know that since uh, the Industrial Revolution started, that started in uh, the first one was in 1780 with mechanization, and the second one was in 1870, around 1870, with electrification. And the third one was with the automation. But the fourth industrial revolution, that is, we call I'm it. Not able to hear, sorry, I'm not able to hear properly. Probably, I think there is some audio problem has occurred from your side. So we Suddenly can hear the voice has gone. We can hear Almost him. Gone. We, can, we can hear him. We all can hear him. We all can uh, hear him. Uh, Dr. Dr. Hear can him, you hear me now? No, oh, so it's you, very civil voice coming. We because some of you people people could not connect me on uh, desktop or uh, laptop, so that's why I'm on my mobile. Oh, okay, okay. But suddenly the voice has gone. I'm not able to hear uh, Mishra, sir. Uh, now, can you hear me? I don't know. Sir, little bit. Your, your voice, voice, what happens your is, voice is important for DRDO. <laughs> <laughs> your voice is very important for DRDO because they can do, do a test. You have to realize it in production. So please, sum up that, I, DRDO. I, I, I have to ensure that DRDO listens to me. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know uh, what is the technical hitch, but uh, should I continue? Uh, I think he has got a data uh, issue. So, you please continue, sir. Okay. So, as I was talking, that Industrial 4.0 has started from 2011 onwards. Now, just see the first Industrial Revolution, second and third, came after almost 100 years. 
whereas uh, industry 4 has come soon after around 50 years half the uh, the uh, time it has taken that means the pace of technological development which is taking is enormous and it is it is good that we are in that era when we are doing the manufacturing and as uh, mr bachpay uh, in his opening yeah. address brought out that government of india and ministry of defense has a big steep target of 1.7 yeah. lakh crores for defense manufacturing now to achieve this we have to ensure a very innovative solution and a technological upgradation of the existing manufacturing facilities as you all know and as uh, told by uh, colonel kubeir that bharat dynamics limited is manufacturing all types of missile systems all types of underwater weapons and uh, countermeasure dispensing systems and most of these uh, weapons are single shot device the uh, type of uh, uh, the quality which is required is has to be more than six sigma because we cannot afford that any uh, missile fired from by a soldier does not hit the target so we have created we already have a uh, uh, legacy manufacturing system which has been working since last 50 years the production and assembly lines have been well established and uh, this is to meet the present single shot device manufacturing but in the line with advancement in production related technologies vdl has been upgrading our uh, and enhancing our productivity rate by getting new technologies new types of machines but today vdl has the best of its class machine for manufacturing and equipment for testing to meet the highest quality standards in this pursuit of continual upgradation of the facilities vdl has also commenced the activities for implementation of industry 4.0 in, in fact if you had visited uh, in lucknow in uh, uh, def expo or uh, last uh, uh, def expo we showed one pilot project to our prime minister in our uh, india pavilion where we showed how we have in, we are integrating our manufacturing facility with the qa agency so that the qa process cuts down and actually this is uh, this pilot project has been established and now we are uh, already uh, 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 i think we have already tendered out for uh, implementing the entire thing in all our facilities means uh, in uh, our bhanur facilities for atgms for astra manufacturing we are uh, going to include because in astra most of the things we will be integrating uh, a major part will be uh, as, uh, manufactured by msmes and we will be getting uh, those items and we will be uh, integrating in our uh, facility so for integration part we are going to include industry 4.0 as you are uh, aware that uh, smart manufacturing is synonymously used with 4.0 it's it's a broad concept not something that can be implemented in the production process directly it is a combination of various technologies and solutions which are collectively implemented in a manufacturing ecosystem these enabling technologies and solutions will help the op in optimizing the entire manufacturing process and increase the overall prof profitability see uh, till now what used to happen that PSUs were not uh, very uh, interested in profit making. They were only working for the national cause. Whereas now things have changed. We, we are under tremendous pressure for profitability, for improving quality, for uh, we have become competitive. There are private industries who have been allowed to enter into the missile uh, manufacturing. So our cost has to come down. And, and actually, to adapt to this type of uh, culture, Industry 4.0 will be very beneficial for a industry like Biodynamics Limited. And actually, the, uh, if you see the, which are the technology enablers for this smart manufacturing, 
as you know that IoT, big data analytic, adaptive manufacturing, or that is additive uh, manufacturing that is 3D printing, then augmented reality is one of the very important part for designing part, uh, designing of the components. So overall, out of this is the biggest challenge which is there is the cyber security. And machine learning is there and blockchain is there. So what I uh, personally feel that the gap which is identified in adoption of smart manufacturing or implementation of industry 4.0 in India's defense manufacturing ecosystem first is the high cost or physical or digital technical infrastructure. See, uh, everyone does not think as I has been told by previous speakers that a capex versus the uh, uh, cost of a component. Um, everyone doesn't see that. We do not have that sort of uh, uh, funding or that sort of money available for implementation of this industry 4.0 because the cost is not very less. It is pretty high. Then the cybersecurity uh, is uh, another thing. For example, uh, for, uh, for equipment, that we manufacture, uh, we the nature of the product is such that we uh, have to have an air gap between the intranet and internet. So for implementation of this uh, industry 4.0 becomes a big challenge because if I have to connect the entire ecosystem, for example, if I have to connect the MSMEs, if I have to come uh, connect the other industries, online, it will be very difficult for us to do that. But we are working uh, uh, with the uh, uh, industries who are uh, into this, like uh, Siemens, then uh, l and and there are uh, other companies who are working in Industry 4.0, and they have given us a solution. So uh, that, that will be a big gap. Then also a leadership skill gap. Uh, it's, it's a very essential. Uh, like senior people uh, uh, at uh, our level, uh, we were not very adaptive to uh, get into this industry 4.0. But uh, frankly speaking, I personally uh, attended few uh, seminars and I went and saw few places where this industry 4.0 has been implemented. And I was very impressed. And I, <clears throat> and I ensured that we start getting uh, implementation of industry 4.0 in our facility. Then also the training, uh, especially the vocational training is a big gap for implementation of industry 4.0. Then uh, standards and interoperability in the interconnected ecosystem, as I had already brought out, that it is very difficult for uh, security systems to become uh, uh, interconnected between the various industries. Then uh, data control and ownership as suppliers and manufacturers become increasingly intertwined. And uh, lack of uh, research and specialist staff, this is uh, another gap. Then uh, suppliers of uh, mechatronics systems and uh, machineries, uh, yeah, right now we have uh, limited uh, suppliers for this. And also a weak network infrastructure. Uh, though uh, it is, uh, as you have seen that, uh, uh, we have a good uh, network, but still we require, if we have to work seamlessly, then we should have a 5G so that we, the type of uh, 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 speed which we require to adapt to the to, uh, industry 4.0 is available. And what I personally feel, what are the challenges uh, for industry 4.0 is the first thing is the skill challenge. Presuming that complete automation is not the realistic view. Looking at the companies like us, which are already have a well-defined legacy manufacturing lines. But we can say that one of the benefits of industry 4.0 uh, in our type of manufacturing is that it will be increasing productivity through a mix of physical as well as digital assistance. But I'm very confident that our manpower with sufficient training will be able to adopt to the skills required for implementation of uh, Industry 4.0. I, I must tell you that the type of skill which a PSU worker has, nobody can have that sort of uh, uh, skill level. And because why I'm telling that we have been manufacturing since last 50 years, 
the type of uh, uh, complex uh, you can say it's a rocket science and uh, our uh, guys are working into that so our skill level is very high but presently they are not trained enough to take on the industry 4.0 type of uh, uh, manufacturing but i'm sure with the uh, type of uh, training is which is required we will be able to do that and second one is the biggest thing is manufacturing challenges the, uh, the manuf uh, uh, manufacturing challenges you can say that some key challenges in the manufacturing is after realization of industry 4.0 the uh, the lack of a clear digital vision is one of the most important thing then fostering of a strong digital culture see till now we most of the things we have been handling with uh, pen and paper whenever uh, our uh, dgq staff comes we have got a big uh, uh, form which is filled manually. He keeps it, strong it. When it goes for uh, eye noting, a big uh, bundle of papers go. They check and then finally eye note is given. Whereas this will help us uh, in doing this, but it will take some time to adopt to this type of culture. But I'm sure we will be able to handle this type of challenges. And the benefits which we are going to get by uh, having this industry 4.0 will be the lower cost of manufacturing there's no doubt about it that the when we are able to check that which all components have crossed the uh, tolerance whether uh, this uh, part will fit into the next part which is going to be uh, uh, assembled and that sort of a thing whereas in uh, uh, previous uh, uh, in a legacy system, what happens that in case a lot is not, which has been uh, uh, not fitting into uh, other uh, parts, they are rejected. Whereas by using this type of uh, technology, we will be able to use such parts also within the ambit of our standards. And also this is going to uh, have uh, additional revenue. It will also optimize the customer relationship will have a clarity on the status of production system in real time. This is the biggest challenge in uh, PSU that our production, our planning and our uh, uh, supply chain does not uh, have a, uh, a very uh, seamless integration. And that is why the present delays. I, I, I'm telling you very openly that this is this is the major part. But if we are able to adopt both uh, this as well as SAP or uh, uh, ERP system, we will uh, be able to overcome this type of problem. Also, there will be a very good transparency in production processes. Uh, as many of uh, our uh, previous speakers who are uh, working in the in the production, uh, our uh, private sector industries, MSMEs, they will understand that, that uh, in the production process, how uh, it is important that the entire thing is very transparent. And also, this will help in uh, reduce inventories by reducing inventory, certainly we will be uh, having good, uh, uh, we'll be having a better revenues and improvements in the health and safety of the workers. This is also a very important thing that in case our, uh, we are able to predict the health of the machine on which our workers are working. So we will be able to uh, reduce any uh, uh, accident by, by uh, 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 in our machines. And also maintenance process will be standardized Energy efficiency of environmental sustained production system will be available and effective use of human and material resources. So these are the various uh, uh, improvements uh, and uh, uh, these are the various uh, benefits of adopting industry and the biggest uh, benefit will be the 100% traceability in production and quality process. Even now for all the missile system, we have 100% traceability, but when it is online, the traceability will be much faster and we will be able to find out ways and means and how to improve and specifically when a defect happens, we will be able to trace back very quickly what was the reason for this defect. So uh, uh, at the end, what I will personally, I feel personally and what I recommend is that a growing technically savvy labor and low cost manufacturing new need to be built upon for having a big target of defense manufacturing in india it is very essential that we create 
this sort of a industry 4.0 revolution not only in the PSU but in entire MSMEs, entire big industries so that we are able to get the target of 1.75 uh, lakh crore manufacturing defense manufacturing in India by 2024-25 and as uh, it was uh, uh, brought out by uh, Mr. Bajpay, the government is also supporting uh, to create a suitable ecosystem for uh, creation of uh, this uh, uh, roadmap for uh, uh, implementation of Industry 4.0. And also they are establishing test labs entire countrywide to advance the, this uh, uh, smart manufacturing process. With this, uh, I conclude. Thank you very much and Jahan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commodore Siddharth Mishra, I think you brought out very good points. And I must tell you the DPEPP also says that the government will encourage DPSUs to adopt 4.0, which was formulated at least three or four years ago. I do not know what is the state of DPSUs today in terms of 4.0. And I still feel that uh, it is a process of continuous uh, evolving uh, process, which I think uh, is the way to go about. You talked about uh, highest quality standards where you can almost eliminate a quality check by the best in class machines. I think that's a very good Good step and um, uh, where you cut down the QA and then you also tended out to uh, improve your facilities at Banor, Astra and all that. I think that's very good. You touched on cyber security and I think that's very, very important because um, if I were to hack into your system and uh, if I want to, uh, you know, um, uh, play around with your data, I can actually send the missile somewhere else when you when it actually fires. And therefore, I think that's a very important point uh, you made. And I'm so happy that, you know, uh, we are conscious of these aspects while we make uh, you know uh, such missiles so when you talked about the supply chain and all that i was thinking in terms of establishment of an information highway uh, which would be between the oem and the supply chain like for yourself you got in your back uh, in your backyard you got companies like them who are doing excellent job today and uh, if you have a good secure information highway in fact you can even correct what is coming from them to you or vice versa between your suppliers, even before it actually reaches you, you are having it first time right. And I think you talked about it in terms of how you want to get it first time right. Uh, you talked about the leadership, how the leadership is, you know, uh, you know, was thinking in terms of then I was getting reminded of how we used to do in the MOD, you know, we wanted to go digital and everybody sends an email. He said, yeah, pele jo hai email ka print out leke hai pas. So, I mean, that's the level to which we are uh, at as leaders. I think uh, we are setting very wrong standards over there. And I think that's very important. Uh, if we want to work on email, we should work on email. We should get approvals on email. That iNote concept should go. And uh, I think you talked about it, and that's very good, the pen and paper. Then, you know, it's very easy to, uh, to criticize somebody in the US because it's a great democracy. They don't take offense. So I can tell you this uh, US general, you know, was working late in the office one day and in Pentagon. And he was, uh, it was almost late in the evening and he was, probably alone. The rest have already left for a weekend. So he was holding a paper in his hand and there was a youngster who walked by and he saluted the general, good evening general. He said, youngster, do you know how to operate this machine? He said, yes, I can do that. So he says, here is the paper. He gave him the paper. That boy put the paper into that and he walked off. Uh, it was a shredder. He wanted a photocopier. So that's the level of uh, digital revolution and digital things which our senior leadership has. And uh, I think we have to really learn to use things. And, and I think uh, you did talk about traceability. That's very important. You talked about energy efficiency. Uh, Greta will be very happy to hear that. Uh, well, I'd a very, very good address, sir. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, last but not the least, but uh, here is uh, the most favorite uh, talk for the evening, I would say, because normally what happens in this country, DRDO keeps on speaking. DRDO says, you know, we have, uh, we have developed this technology. We can develop that. We are doing the AMCA. We need so many thousand crores. Nobody listens to them. Nobody listens. And uh, today I was very happy that um, uh, when uh, the industry was speaking, DRDO could not listen. But the important part, the important part over there was DRDO wanted to listen. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is the crux of uh, the whole system. We should listen to each other. We should actually understand what others are saying. Only when you understand the problem, you can come out with a solution. And that was de demonstrated very, very aptly by Dr. Mayank Trivedi, who is the director of the DIITM. I really love the fourth floor. It's such a friendly floor in DRDO. 
you can just walk and you know from each door to door uh, the 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 culture is the same uh, the the attitude is the same the attitude is one of how to help the industry how can i handle them what can i do more please tell me and here i am so um, dr mayang divedi the whole industry has been talking about this 4.0 and all that and uh, here is uh, drdo which is uh, which is to set the standards and like you know Lord Krishna says, Yadhyata Charati Sreshtaha Sasta Deve Sarojana Sayad Pramanam Kurute Lokasta Anuvartate. So whoever sets the leaders should set the standards. Yadhyata Charati Sreshtaha. The, the, if leader sets the standard, the industry will follow. And I think uh, I'm talking in terms of a design versus a production uh, 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 the relationship. And that's where, uh, let's see as to uh, with this, with the type of enthusiasm that you have and the way DRDO is going forward. And I'm sure your talk is going to enlighten us to uh, uh, to make it a very refreshing evening. Dr. Mayang Devedi, all yours. Thank you very much. Basically, still I'm not able to hear you properly. Reason being, today I am operating from uh, my mobile phone because there was some issue from the SOTM side. They could not connect me through my computer or my laptop. Nevertheless, through my mobile phone, I'm uh, delivering a talk. The first of all, uh, Dr. S.C. Kansal, co-chairman of the National Council on Aerospace and Defense, and of course, chairman of SMPP Private Limited, and Commodore Siddharth Mishra, CMD BDR, Colonel Kubir, and for his nice introduction and the way he's comparing the program, my industry partners and Ashochem officials, ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to you all. I know it's, I'm the last speaker and uh, now it has to be, uh, the conference has to be finished now fast, so I will not take much time. But yes, I will say a few things because uh, as an R&D perspective and as I feel as a scientist and as a director of industry interface, what is happening and where are the gaps and how to fulfill them. The number one, I would like to tell you that uh, the way the government of India, the DRDO, MOD, all put together, putting up the policies, new guidelines, etc. We are trying to minimize the gaps in the production as much as possible. And we are trying to dovetail many of such policies with the government of India basic thinking so that the industries are getting benefited further and further. And you have seen of late that so many things have come up where the start from IDEX, TDF, and make one category, make two, etc. So many things have come up, need not say make in India, etc. All our old stuff. And we are finding that industry's participation has improved. Today, I can tell you that what it used to be 10 years back, the industry's position, then they were completely at the receiving end. Today, the industries have come up so well that in many areas, the DRDO industries, we are finding that industry is completely complementing DRDO, and that's how the 100-year item list by DRDO has been released, because the industries are capable of designing, de uh, developing, and manufacturing those products where the R&D efforts and design knowledge of DRDO sometimes not required for those 100-year products. So this is the level the industries have come up. But nevertheless, there are certain gaps because this conference is primarily for the gaps. Then how to talk about how to go about it? Number one, I will tell you, as many speakers are speaking, and I have heard them, that advanced manufacturing technologies still be like that. Let it be any manufacturing when it comes to advancing, like underwater laser welding, you talk about, or you talk about the fabs, or that uh, uh, that uh, all the manufacturing facilities, etc. We do very good various side design asset in India. And many foreign companies are operating, our engineers are working. And finally, for the fabrication of FAPS, etc., we go out. So I think we have to focus on those areas, even when we talk about the additive technologies and molecular modeling, building, all such things. Again, we have to work on this. And for that, let me tell you, most of the time we find that even the, we should be open to the collaborations. Because collaborations are the ways where we can leapfrog the technologies and we should not be adverse to them rather wherever possible we should try to go for more and more collaborations second thing where we find that in our defense production we are finding problem and that i am very much private to because this is an area which is my expertise too we are lacking in advanced materials 
basically we have got the ideas we have got the design capabilities everything is there but how to convert our ideas into a product a viable product we require material materials are the medium to convert our ideas into a product so advanced materials again this is an area where we have to focus on talk about the uh, technical textiles your bulletproof jacket material like uh, dynamics making the ultra high molecular polymer uh, high time molecular weight polyethylene Kevlar, etc. Anything we talk about, everywhere you will find when it's come to advanced materials, we are lacking. Even there are certain very high quality, high purity, rare earth materials where we have to work on it so that those materials also have made available for our various strategic programs. Then I will tell you that about the test facilities. Today we have got the other test facilities, many other institutions like BAR, uh, ISRO, etc. Their test facilities, CSIR test facilities, their NABL accredited labs. But apart from that, the type of volume we are handling in India, I think to facilitate industries further, these, these, this is one of the gaps where we have to ensure that our test facilities have to be further multiplied. And I think towards that, Department of uh, Defense Production is working on it. And that's how they want to further multiply such test facilities. Yes, of course, the uh, cost is involved. But that we have to see that is for the larger goods of the good of the industry so we have to look into this area too then when our industries are working uh, as lsi or the big industries working for the major systems and programs somehow i find some type of inkling is given to me that they are not very comfortable with the industrial ecosystem suppose one lsi is working for a big program and there is so happening that there are other SMEs who are, say, 200 number of SMEs or 500 number of SMEs are working for that program to assist them. Those SMEs also do a lot of efforts because finally those SMEs also put their skin in the game. Their investment is there in terms of manpower, sometimes money also, though we are funding them for the development part. But even though their passion is there, they have invested their time, etc. Keeping that in mind, those SMEs, they are very important uh, supply chain partners in our ecosystem but sometimes it happens that the lsi feels that whatever the important technologies are there where they want to control so that they can maximize the profit i think there should be a situation at least in india and i am very sure it is there already in the entire world europe and america i can firmly say about it but in india also we have to understand that there should be a situation live and let live that's how you multiply your hands Second thing that we are able to meet schedules. If every egg is all the eggs are put in one basket, then there will be a problem. I think our industry must should be open, much more open for this ecosystem type of situation. Then another thing is there, which I think Colonel Kobeir will 100% agree with me that our industry's user interface, I find there are certain issues. Of late, it has improved. I will not say there's a problem, but I think this user interface has to be improved further. When we are going for any technical trial or user trial or NCNC trial after the GS evaluation, I think a type of interaction, a type of uh, cooperation is required between industry and uh, armed forces or between users. I think that has to be further strengthened so that once your user interface is very strong, then most of your problem of the induction of a product, whatever you have done, and whatever modification and others you want to bring in in the product, that becomes much easier. It should not happen that this user interface you feel that is only good with the DPSUs and earlier honors factories. I think with the private industries also you, usage is quite open. It is, I think, your call. You have to further interact with them and ensure that all the technical problems are resolved with DRDO and other operational problems are resolved with user. Skill development, uh, Komodo Misha told very nice thing, but yes, skill development is another very important area we have to plug in. But point is in skill development, right now we have got enough manpower, good quality manpower. Only in certain areas where the specified, specialized uh, skills are required, there we have to train. So this is another gap we have to see into it. Finally, I will say today all the policies and ecosystem is there to support industry so that they can come up. Like, TDF is going on, IDEX is going on, and the MAKE 2 industries are being invited, and uh, MAKE 3 under season, so much indigenization is there. 
I think there are enough opportunities which were never before. The way government of India, Ministry of Defence, DRDO, all put together, they have provided, and I think industry must make use of it. All those gaps, whatever I have discussed, I think industry is aware of it, and we are trying to plug it, fulfil all those requirements. And with that, I am very sure we will be able to provide a good product with quality, with reliability, within time frame, etc. Only two more things. Lastly, I will say. We must be very much careful about the documentation, which I always repeat in all my talks. The documentation, if it's strong, then your quality is ensured. That I am finding many times industry are lacking sometimes. And number two, you try to invest in R&D also. Because the R&D investment is not only the money part, basically how to retain the good R&D manpower so that they deliver you on a later date. This is another skill, that type of HR policy you should have. And with that, I think we will be working quite well in our ecosystem and surely the country will become self-reliant in defense manufacturing and truly out of network in two a sense. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Country will become truly Atmanirbhar. I think that's a very, very wonderful statement towards the end of the evening. And that's what everyone is wanting to hear. And uh, coming from DRDO, I think that's uh, that that get, that sets the pace for the rest of the evening. Because I always feel that the uh, the strength is in the design, and uh, only when you know how to design, when the knowledge is in your head, and you know you can modify the design, you can do whatever you want to do. He talked about all the uh, gaps. I'm not going to repeat them. The laser welding, uh, underwater laser welding, fab, advanced materials, advanced. Materials. He talked about collaborations, which the sailorly scholar also talked about, and I think that's coming very good between um, two uh, two people who are thinking about it. And I think uh, collaborations should be the way because collaborations create strength, create friends, create interdependency. Atmanirbhar can make you aloof. Whereas interdependency, I think somewhere is requirement. It should be both ways, not not one way that that much. Yes, he talked about the gaps in testing the volumes and therefore he says about the gaps. I think that's very important. He talked about rare earth uh, materials for strategic programs. He's worried about the strategic programs. The number of them strategic missiles. We have not even ordered even one. Um, the idea has gone ahead and tested each one of them while China was, uh, you know, Throwing um, muscles over there, DRDO was flexing it in the air, trying to tell them that, you know, we are here. So uh, he talked about the industry ecosystem, the industry user interface. I think that's a very, very valid point that he made. And I think that's where I want to really talk about this information highway, which should be there between uh, the user and the uh, industry, between the uh, prime uh, industry and the supply chain. He talked about various things like TDF, IDEX, make two, make three. But I think. Uh, he didn't miss out deliberately, I'm sure, but uh, I think uh, one of the most important things that the industry looks forward mm -hmm. is the DCPP because that uh, that shows a lot of promise in terms of uh, uh, g getting into larger systems, and that's where DRDO plays a very very important role. He talked about the importance of documentation that comes automatically in 4.0 because traceability, everything is documented in 4.0, and, and I think that is. That is very important and investment in R&D. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a, a fantastic evening. And I think uh, we had uh, very, very good talks from um, various people. I just want to give one concluding remark, which I thought I should quote from the World Economic Forum. Uh, most of the global projects have moved to full scale implementation. And the World Economic Forum estimates that about 70% of the industry that embarked on industry food journey are stuck at the pilot stage. This is what the World Economic Forum says, not I. And the leaders, which includes the lighthouse factory of Tata Steel in Netherlands. And um, here the focus has been on MTTR and MTB, MTBF um, uh, and maintenance KPIs. This is true for mass manufacturing with focus on sweating out manufacturing lines. Should not be the focus on aerospace and defense, by the way. But uh, the, the WEF. World Economic Forum has estimated that predictive maintenance reduces unplanned downtime by 25%. Uh, flexible automation in assembly lines have increased labor productivity by 30%, and digital R&D and engineering have lowered the design iteration cycle by 40%. That's what Dr. Devedi also talked about. Ladies and gentlemen, all that I can do is to hand over to uh, our co-chairman of the uh, Defense Committee, Dr. S.C. Kansal. Mm, IIT uh, Mumbai, 
and uh, has got a great company over there, SMPP. And uh, they are they are embarking on a very larger journey in up up north in the hills where it's cooler than what's it's in Delhi. Uh, but they're going to have a, a large facility over there. And uh, I think I'll I'll ha I'll 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 let him do the honors, sir. All yours. Before I start, I'll, I'll let me address Mr. Anurag Bajpai, who has already left. He had a very, very busy schedule. He addressed us very nicely, and uh, I conveyed my thanks to already. I will not repeat it. I furthermore again thank him again. I thank Mr. Mayank Devedi. Kanukumir, I fully agree with you the atmosphere and the climate of fourth floor of DRDO. I'll further go ahead with the hospitality of Dr. Mayank Devedi. A couple of weeks back, me and my team had visited his office. What a hospitality he showed. What an openness in the discussion he showed it. You know, We have gone for some technology and some issues, and he solved it. He solved it completely and gave an open offer for giving the offer. And also, what a beautiful samosa and hot samosa in this winter we he served up. So nice of you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the today's evening. Sorry we delayed you from a busy schedule and you have to wait in the evening and because of the interruption in the you know in between. Sorry again for that. Thank you so much, sir. I thank Commodore Siddharth Mishra. For your wonderful speech, sir, wonderful guidance to the industry, how to increase the profitability, how to increase the inspect, decrease the inspection schedule, and getting the I note issued. Thank you so much, sir. I thank Mr. Vikas Balani from CDB, Ashmita Sethi ji, who has already said the suppliers of uh, you know engine uh, Air Force engine and military engine 30, 34 percent of world world. They are giving. Mr. Adam, I'm all with you with regard to MSMEs. What problem they are facing, I can understand. You told the problem being faced the running unit of MSMEs. They are furthermore problem for any new entrant to come to MSME. MSME guy cannot enter. It is very, very difficult for it to come. You have to first install the, you have to get a CV done, the capacity verification done. Then only you can be registered in there. So there are, uh, I fully with all, I will not repeat the problem which said, I only say, yes, there's the problem, 100% payment you have to put the ROM deal and for getting payment 45 days, you have to wait, minimum 45 days here and the ROM deal supply. Thank you so much, thank you. I thank Mr. Partha Chaudhary. I thank Mr. Ashok Vadavan from Adani's. Sir, thank you so much. What a wonderful system you have put it. Millions you produce in a month or a day. Sorry, I didn't quit it. Anything which was produced 30 minutes, you are producing eight seconds. Fantastic. And the quality, we can imagine what a quality, wonderful quality your company must be making to this. It's a new entrance. Adani is a new entrance to defense. We welcome you, sir. I thank Captain Vikram Mahajan, who is preferring JVs and co-production and co-development. I thank it, Commander Siddharth Mishtaji. Again, I, I thank you, sir. Thank you for the Good lessons you have given to the industry. I thank once more again DS Rajaraji and thank the whole team of SOCHAM for arranging the program. I thank once more again. Thank you so much, Jain, and good night. Thank you. And thank you, Colonel Kubair, for this wonderful moderation. Yeah, the wonderful global who's famous. Sorry, this is globally famous, Colonel Kobe. Oh, thank, thank you. Global moderator. Yeah, global. Yeah, that, that is there. Sorry. I, I, okay, bye. I bye, bye. that. Without that, sir, sir, without please, that, Colonel Kobe is within time. Really? Thank, 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 thank you. 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 Thank you.